sun flare that actually moved it away. Did you see that? Oh, uh, that's the arm that holds that little disc so that the lens doesn't get burned. But you can see that that sun flare moved that um, that comet away from it. Is this yeah. the Vatican that did all this? Um, well, the Vatican has a large investment in most of the probes that observe the sun and the tele dates when it was going to come back. Well, they missed by two weeks. And all the people that are looking for Planet X, they're all disappointed because they say Planet X didn't show up. They didn't notice a comet twice the size of Jupiter showed up. They were, the, the comet was two weeks in advance from the Sumerian text, but hey, on a 10,000 year prediction, I think that's pretty dang good. Right? Yeah, exactly. It was, yeah, it was observable from um, the west coast here very early in the morning, at, at sunrise, I believe. What month was February? February, yeah. Of 2003? Yeah, last winter. And uh, here's the, uh, here's the map when I updated it and it showed the comets and there was two comets that went by one after the other now let me play this in slow-mo this first comet came by which is already enormous and then this one check this out the same uh, no they're on an angle coming in yeah However, the gravitational field of an object that big going inside the Mercury orbit should have pulled Mercury right into the sun. Wow. And, and look, at, look at the tail. When it's at the sun, the tail is still in the Earth's orbit. <laughs> well, if you know where the orbit is, you should be able to calculate what the... What the, the gravitational influence was. Yeah, yeah, we did. We shouldn't be here. Why are we here? It didn't snap back. It means it's still moved. Pardon me? The orbit of the Earth. You know, I mean, if you're saying that it changed the orbit of the Earth, then it's changed. Oh, it didn't. Because if it did change the orbit of the Earth, it would have changed. The, the calculations show that it would have changed it significantly. And. Uh, a significant change in our orbit would have generated tidal waves and all sorts of events on the surface of the planet that we didn't see. Well, mostly necessarily, yes. A small change over time would be a big change. A small change in the short time. It wouldn't be a small change. It would be a large change, including Mercury going into the sun behind the comet. <laughs> you know? Uh, you're talking a huge gravitational field here, extremely large. Uh, I believe that we were given another chance. Well, I think we're floating in grace. We're definitely floating in grace at this point, and somebody is taking care of us. Go ahead. Well, it's because of the angle at which it, which it came in and the angle of the Earth relative to it. It was not easily available. But there's pictures on the net of it. People took pictures in the morning of the comet. It's enormous. It occurred that quickly. It was pretty yeah, it was moving extremely fast. It moved extremely fast. Within the question of a few days, it was out of our solar system. Yeah. Yeah, the expan 
Yeah, the the expanded gas. That's a good point. Uh, the expanded gas of that comet um, is much larger than the sun. Is well, you, you, really you you see, you see the size of the of the perturbation and the expansion of the gases around the comet um, makes the size of the comet actually much larger than twice the size of Jupiter. Um, so when they say twice the size of Jupiter, they're talking about the nuclei of this comet because the material around it, this is the size of the sun. The material around it makes it almost as large as the sun. I'm talking about size. I'm talking about size. The mass is directly related to its composition, which is supposed to be mostly ice and rocks. So, uh, uh, well, yeah, but that would be an unusual comet. In general, comets are ice and rocks. an extremely large mass. And the calculations show with a, with a comet made out of ice and rock of this size, the gravitational field is extraordinary, is enormous. Go ahead. So you're thinking that this was definitely a comet, this wasn't a starship. Yeah, this was definitely a comet. They were protected by other forces, but this wasn't, if this was just that's right, because you see on this on this one, you know, unlike the the videos of these other objects, you can tell there's a pretty good tail there. You know, I mean, this is a tail the size of an astronomical unit, almost, from the sun to the Earth. You know, um, so that's you know, that's appropriate for a comet. You see. Go ahead. What's the source of this? Is this, an, this is an animation, obviously, since the Earth is in it, or is it? Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. This is uh, this is a program that gives you the activities that are going on in the solar system. But it's based on measurements. Yeah, yeah. It's all absolutely accurate to what's going on out there. At least some of the stuff that's released by NASA, in any case. That's actual footage. That's actual footage. Yeah. This is not an animation. This is pictures taken by Soho of this comet going by. Go ahead. With regards to that, what, what, what are your information and thoughts on what the latitude was wrote with regards to the sun, where that came from, and was that, might that affect? Because that would have created a large <laughs> perturbation in our daily life. <laughs> <laughs> Now, um, the sun is not, you know, the activity that's going on in our solar system is, is just outrageous right now. You guys need to know about this. It's, uh, it's kind of nuts. This is what the sun does every year. Uh, every 11 years, I'm sorry. It's called the sun cycle. Every 11 years, the sun flips its poles. Its north pole becomes its south pole, and its south pole becomes its north pole. And when it does that, and I, I don't mean that it flips its physical poles, it, fills, it flips its magnetic poles. And when it does that, every 11 years, it goes from a smooth surface with not too many sunspots to more and more sunspots <laughs> till it reaches its peak and flips its pole and then it goes back to normal. It goes back to this type of structure. So this was the approach to the next, to the last 
sun cycle, the last solar, the last solar maximum. Go ahead. Is the solar maximum concurrent with the minimum magnetic field? Just <coughs> no, it's concurrent with the maximum magnetic field. The magnetic field becomes extremely active because of all of the sunspots generated generate a huge magnetic field and huge X-ray emission as well. Sunspots generate huge X-ray emissions. And that's because material is being sucked in inside a black hole. And you expect X-ray emission from that. But um, as you look at the sun, you find that uh, these sunspots, you know, are supposed to go to a maximum and then go back to normal. So here is the sun in 97, the sunspot maximum 